at the beginning of the war in Iraq, I was watching CNN one day. It was the first day they bombarded Baghdad. What I saw drove me to write some verses that expressed my thoughts at the time and ever since. So good or bad, I'm going to share them with you. <clears throat> Images on a screen, talking heads and words running across, massive explosions, great clouds of smoke and dust. And under every cloud, people like you and me looking for safety somewhere, anywhere. Military targets only, we are told. But, oops, that one missed and hit a marketplace. And, oh, that one struck a mosque. What if the city were Cincinnati, with my granddaughter Rachel desperately seeking shelter for herself and her two children, my own great grands? What if it were Portland? images on a screen. I don't need the talking heads and the running words. The images are enough. Too much. God help us to see that there are no we and they and only one world for all of us. You will be involved. You must be involved in the effort to get a handle on some of these problems. Or perhaps the equally great problem of spreading the so-called advantages of our society to the less favored parts of the world. One advantage you have over my generation, many of you have been abroad traveled and studied, seen what other people are like. Most of the benefits and problems are shared by other societies. But don't forget the poverty-stricken and deprived parts of the world. Give a thought to opportunities like the Peace Corps or perhaps an outreach program of your church or some other benevolent organization. I'm going to close with an experience of my own that may or may not be shared in some sense by others here. A few years into my retirement, I joined a group traveling to Central Africa, <clears throat> to the country then called Zaire, now the Congo. I was the only one in our group who could speak French. Not too fluently, indeed. But the French of that country, formerly a Belgian colony, is much simpler than in Paris. This was an advantage to me in that I could converse with people wherever we went. At one point, we visited a high school. And naturally, I asked if I could visit a math class. This turned out to be a class in plain geometry. Shortly after the teacher began the day's lesson, he was called out for an urgent phone call. And there I was with this room full of kids. Well, I couldn't just sit there like a bump on a log. So I stood up and found a piece of chalk and drew a triangle on the blackboard. Then I realized that I didn't know many mathematical terms in French. <laughs> so I just pointed to the figure and said, qu'est-ce que c'est? And several voices said, triangle. And I thought, well, that was easy. 
when we went on with the idea that I began with, well, I was learning much more than I was teaching. I was actually sorry when the teacher came back. I was left with a provoking thought. Wow, if I'd been exposed to this situation when I was 23 instead of 68, this is where I might have been teaching. A final thought, just for the improvement of your life, look or listen for something beautiful every day, perhaps a flowering tree or the song of a meadow lark. Let it sink in for a moment before you go on.